Okay, we're pulling. What's up? It's Jimfro from Ready Check Pull, and this is our official boss guide for normal and heroic Huntsman Altimore. This guide is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. They get early access to these guides before anyone else, so if you want early access too, check out the Patreon link below. Huntsman Altimore is one of the first bosses you get to go to after Shriekwing. It's a three-phase fight where you deal with Altimore the entire time, but you also have to deal with his three hounds, one for each phase of the fight. After you've killed one hound, the next hound becomes active, and all three of them have totally different abilities. Altimore effectively shares health with the hounds too, so all damage is good damage. Okay, so you can lust on pull, or you can save it for a phase that you're struggling with. The fight starts off with Altimore and the first hound, Margor. The tanks should keep them where they're at and stack them together for cleave damage. Everyone else should fan out around the boss in a circle, because Altimore frequently shoots a random, unavoidable cone and you don't want the whole raid getting hit by that. Altimore will occasionally mark three players with red arrows. Those players should position themselves quickly to avoid the other two marked players and then stop moving. It's way easier to have the rest of the raid adjust to the marked players rather than having the raid guess where the arrows will end up. After a couple seconds, Altimore will shoot an arrow towards each marked player that does damage and puts a heavy dot on anyone it hits. So you definitely don't want to get hit by anyone else's arrow. In the first phase, the tank should taunt swap on Margor at two stacks of the bleed debuff. It's just a dot, nothing fancy. Occasionally, Margor will mark a random player with this red swirly circle and then leap to them after a few seconds. A couple other players should stack in the circle to split the damage from the leap. On Heroic, the leap will also put a short bleed on the players helping with the soak, so you don't want too many people soaking it. When Margor dies, the next hound, Bargas, comes out. Have one of the tanks move Altimore to the middle of the room, away from Bargas, making sure to still have everyone continue to spread out around Altimore. Bargas has a couple weird abilities that will instantly wipe you if you don't know how to deal with them. The first ability he casts is called Rip Soul. It's a big magic hit on the tank that spawns a friendly soul that walks toward Altimore. The healers need to target it and focus heal it to full before it gets to Altimore. If it reaches Altimore, you're dead. The soul will spawn with the same health percentage as the tank after the magic hit. So the best way to deal with this is by having your tank move Bargast away from Altimore before each cast, use a defensive cooldown, and then have your healer spam heal it to full. This only happens about every 30 seconds, so you should be able to stack Bargast with Altimore between the cast for some extra cleave damage. The second ability Bargas cast happens every other rip soul, so first, third, fifth, and so on. It spawns two shades of Bargas that need to be immediately CC'd with things like Polymorph or Freezing Trap. These shades have a ridiculous amount of health, but while CC'd, they gain a stacking debuff that increases their damage taken. So after a while, you'll be able to break them out of the CC and kill them almost instantly. We recommend waiting at least until the next rip soul to kill them, but you definitely want to do it before the next set of them spawn after about 60 seconds. Be careful not to break the CCs early and definitely don't let their cast get off or else you're dead. Once Bargas dies, the last hound Hecatus comes out. The tank on Altimore should keep Altimore where he's at in the middle of the room. Have the other tank bring Hecatus into cleave range of Altimore. Every time Hecatus melee swings, he gets a buff that increases his melee damage by a stacking 25%. You reduce his stacks by moving him, but each stack removed triggers AoE damage on the entire raid. So the best way to deal with this is by constantly moving Hecatus around Altimore, steadily dropping his stacks and only ever stopping if a player's health gets too low. Healers really need to watch Watch out for this and cycle their cooldowns if needed. If you do ever need to stop, his melee damage will quickly get out of hand, so tanks should have a few defensives ready just in case. Hecatus will also occasionally put these brown circles around multiple players. These players need to run away from the group by the time the circle expires because it drops this permanent zone of rocks that you don't want to stand in. Over time, these zones fill up more and more of the room, so the further away you drop them, the more room you'll have to work with later on. And once Hecatus is dead, just finish off Altimore and you win. All right, so quick recap. During the whole fight, fan out around Altimore and never get hit by any other player's red arrow. When Margor is active, taunt swap at two stacks of the bleed and soak the red circles with a couple of other players. When Bargast is active, move Bargast away from Altimore for Rip Soul and heal the soul to full before it gets to Altimore. CC the shades of Bargast for a while and then kill them quickly. When Hecatus is active, if the raid is healthy, keep Hecatus moving near Altimore to drop his stacks. If you get a brown circle around you, run it out far away from the raid. And that's pretty much it. If you like this guide, support us on Patreon. We have a goal of reaching 100 patrons by the end of the tier so that we can do this for next tier and keep making all kinds of other guides too. Thank you so much to all the patrons who already support us. We honestly can't thank you enough. Also, you can find our written version of this guide on Icy Veins linked below. Like, subscribe, and join our Discord to keep up with everything Ready Check Pull.
Peace.